We don't, we don't like to hear that one. But we, we as a people can be very critical of others. And we need to be careful of that. See, what you are walking toward means you're walking away from something else, right? I can't be, go I can't be going two directions at once, right? I'm walking away from that, or I'm walking away from here. So what are you walking towards? And what are you walking from? As we walk to someone or something, we automatically walk away from something or someone. It's called, it's called separation. God asked the children of Israel to separate themselves on multiple occasions. I want us to turn to Ezra. If, we're, if you're in the Psalms, it's going to be to your left. So you got Ezra, Nehemiah, Job, Psalms. I'll give you a minute to get there. We're going to be looking at Ezra chapter 10. Ezra was a, uh, was a priest, the people of God. In Ezra 10, verse 11. Actually, verse 10. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now, therefore, make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure. And separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Now look at the response of the congregation. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, as thou hast said, what does it say? So must we do. I want to, I want to ask you, who's, who's speaking here? Ezra's speaking. A man of God. A leader. You say, well, it's the word of God. Yeah, but God is using a man. And he says, and Ezra's priest stood up and said unto them, The principle here is that they didn't follow Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let's look there. Deuteronomy chapter 7. He's telling them, you know, you've taken strange wives. You've increased the, the trespass of Israel. But look, at, look with me to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verses 3 through 6. God's giving his people instruction. He says, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. And verse 4 tells you why. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy all their altars, break down their images, cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Listen, if you're here and you're born again or you're listening, you are a special people. And you have to look at yourself that way. You're looking at things through, through God, the lens of God. We're a special people. And he's telling them in verse 5 to break down the images, cut down their groves. There's things in this world that we should not be a part of. And when we associate ourselves, the principle here, when we associate ourselves with, with others that don't love God, we're going to end up learning their ways. And they will turn us away. Look at chapter 7, verse 11. He tells them, Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Israel did not. So here is Ezra telling them. And I submit to you today, 
Here is your preacher telling you. Well, I don't have a preacher. Well, maybe you should be in church. You should get yourself in church more often because you need to be told things. So here's the word of God. It tells us things too. Well, I just didn't have time to be in my Bible today. Who did you get your instruction from today? You need to ask yourself those questions. Listen, this is screaming a principle. Tonight's principle, in, in, our, in our workbook, page 82, we need to be men and women with a separated walk. The RU principle number six is those who do not love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. It's an eternal principle. We will, I will, and you will, as it said in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 4. Well, what did it say there? It shall, that we shall turn away, right? When we involve ourselves with those who do not love the Lord, we will turn away. What, what, what happens when we hang out with people that don't love the Lord? We take upon ourselves their attitudes, their philosophies. They will turn thy son away from me, the Lord. The philosophies from TV, our radio programs that we listen to, worldly practice will turn you and I away from the principles of godly living. So we're supposed to separate ourselves. Separate yourselves from and away and walk away and be separated unto God and his principles of living and conduct. Colossians 1.13. Colossians 1.13. Here he says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. You know what that word translated means? It means he removed from one place to another. That's what God did for us. When we, when we accepted Christ as our Savior, he removed us from one place and put us to another. In Galatians 4.9. In Galatians 4.9. He says, but now after ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? So many Christians, they'll get saved, and then they, they turn back to the weak and beggarly elements. They turn back to the old attitudes, the old way of doing things. That word beggarly means destitute of Christian virtues and eternal riches. Listen, when I was in my 20s, my anger did not show the virtue of Christianity. My critical spirit did not show the virtue of Christianity. That's what we're supposed to, aren't we supposed to be showing forth Christ in everything that we do? In 2 Corinthians 6, 17, we don't need to turn there, but it says, wherefore, come out from among them. It says, come out. We're going to be going to that verse later on, but we're, we're supposed to be people that are, have a separated walk. The word separate in the Webster means to make space between. It means to disunite. It means to part, to be disconnected, to withdraw from each other. We don't, we don't want to do that. We're, we're afraid we're going to hurt someone's feelings. What about God's feelings? You ever think of that? When we, we're supposed to be disconnected from the anger, the bitterness, and those things, how does God feel about how we re respond to things? In our workbook, letter B, the Holy Spirit will influence us to order our steps through what? Our good Christian friends. 
I ask you this. Consider who your friends are. Consider the conversations that you have with those friends. And are your friends, this is, this is the, 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 the whole, the, the real question, are your friends influenced by the Holy Spirit? Or are they influenced by another spirit? When we talk about Christian friends, we're talking about those you see exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit in life situations. I'm not talking about people that can talk about the Bible, because there's a lot of people that can talk about the Bible and sound all flowery and good. But let them peer into your life a little bit. How about the last situation between you and a friend or your spouse or your children? Let someone, let someone peer at that and let them play that back. And you tell me, do they see the fruit of the Spirit being exhibited? I know some very bitter and angry Christians. And I'll be honest with you, I don't suggest getting advice or following after them. And I don't care how old they are. They can be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old, but they can be walking after flesh. You say, well, why do you say that? Because the wrong influencer is clouding their judgment. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're reading a, a lengthy passage here. So. But in chapter 5 of Ephesians, he says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling favor, savor. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint's. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Are, where, where are your friends in this? You see what I'm saying? For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, shall inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Look at verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. <clears throat> Those who do not love the Lord will not help you serve the Lord. Right? It's right here. Those who do not love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. Listen, if someone loves the Lord, they're not going to be involved in fornication or uncleanness, or covetousness. They're not going to be involved in filthiness or foolish talking. And there's a lot of that that goes around, foolish talking. You need to remove yourself from that. In verse 80 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever, do, whos, whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. I mean, there's a lot in there. But he says, be not partakers with them. In Proverbs 22, Proverbs chapter 22, we're talking about friends here. Proverbs chapter 22 
in verses 24 and 25. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. And he tells you why. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. You mean if, if I have a Christian brother that has, an, has anger, I should, yeah, you'll learn his ways. James one twenty six. Let's turn there. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his song, not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, what does it say? This man's religion is what? Vain. It's vain. Turn with me to James chapter 3. He says, My brethren, verse 1, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that, we may, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, they are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Is that what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do for us? The Holy Spirit's that still small voice is supposed to turn us. And he goes on to talk about this, the tongue being, being a fire. But look down in verse 13. He said, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, he didn't say out here, did he? He didn't say we're fighting amongst each other, right? Where, where is this? The envying bitterness is right here. It's in our heart. God's concerned about the heart. He says, if you, if you have bitter and envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in, in peace of them that make peace. You want peace, you sow peace. See, in James, the tongue only God can tame. And you know how he does it? He does it in 2 Corinthians 10.5. And many of you, if you've been here for any length of time, you know it's one of my favorite verses to expound on. But in 2 Corinthians 10, because it's an exercise that we so lack doing. We don't like exercising uh, physically, let alone spiritually. But the Bible says here in 2 Corinthians 10.5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity what? Every thought. Not just the, not just the bad ones, but every single thought into the obedience of Christ. In other words, you put that, you take that thought, you put that in prison for a moment and you check it out by the word of God and if you don't have a scriptural principle, you cast it down. That would clear up a lot of things, wouldn't it? It goes back to my life verse. Be not rash with thy mouth, for God is in heaven, thou upon the earth. Therefore let thy words be few. Sometimes we just need to Amen. close our mouth. Yeah. Listen, we need to check the character of the life before you get counsel from them. That makes sense? If you're going to get counsel from someone, you better check the character of their life before you get counsel from them. Let's 
2 Corinthians chapter 6. A little bit to your left. Are the people you get counsel from, are they influenced by the Holy Spirit? Galatians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17. He says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But they're such nice people. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's what it says, right? For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he, he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and dwell in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. Now, a couple words I want to define for you. The word fellowship there means participation. And he says, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What Does unrighteousness and, un, and righteousness participate with one another? No, they're direct, they're diametrically opposed. What about communion? And what communion hath light with darkness? What partnership does light and darkness have with one another? Right now we have, we have light in here, right? If I turn to dark, there's no, fel there's, there's no communion there. You either have one or the other. In our workbook, letter C. Some friendships can also greatly hinder our walk with God. Now, I didn't, didn't look this verse up, but I, I can remember that Amon had a friend. That was, uh, and he asked, he gave him some very disturbing advice. Do your friendships hinder, hinder your walk with God? Do you, let me ask you this. Do your friendships hinder you from getting to the house of God? That's, that's what I would be asking. How about the friendships with, the, with that, that screen in your living room? You know, Does that hinder you from coming to church sometimes? In Romans chapter 16, let's turn there. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Paul's closing out his letter to the Romans. And he says, now I beseech you. He's, he's begging you, brethren, Now, we hear this a lot. Well, we're supposed to love everyone, and I, I do love everyone. But this, this, is a, this is a command here, okay? He says, mark them, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the dark doctrine which ye have learned. And then he goes a little further. Avoid them. Know what it means? Walk away. Yes. Leave them standing where they are standing. Get away. Get out. Because their philosophies and their way of thinking is going to skew yours. It says, For they are such, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. In 
In other words, it says make note of them that cause divisions. I looked up divisions for you. I also looked up mark. Mark means to make note. How about this? Take aim at. Take aim at. Divisions is disunion or dissensions. And here's, here, here's one, dissensions. I love, I love when this all comes together. Dissensions, disagreement that leads to discord. Hmm. Imagine that. Discord, any disagreement which produces angry passions, contests, disputes, litigation, or, or war. This can be Christians too. You know that, right? There, there are Christians that will cause discord and, and undertone and undermine the work of God in the local church. And the Bible's telling them, mark them. Paul's telling them in Romans, mark them. Take aim at them. Which cause divisions contrary to the doctrine or right teaching, which ye have learned, and avoid them, for they are such as serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, their own fleshly appetites. If we don't separate ourselves from those who do not serve the Lord and are consumed with their own fleshly appetites, we will be influenced by their fleshly appetites. Let me say that again. If we do not separate ourselves from those who do not serve the Lord and are consumed with their own fleshly appetites, we will be influenced by their fleshly appetites. We will be influenced. Why? Because our fleshly appetites are often fed by our friends. And they, they, we will, and they can kind of drag us along. Another thing that can drag us along is our thoughts. Our thoughts can have the same effect upon us. Be careful of what thoughts you entertain because they can destroy us. Genesis chapter 6. We're going to be jumping around here quite a bit. But Genesis chapter 6. And verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was what? Only evil continually. Turn to Psalms chapter 10. Psalms chapter 10. It's like, why do you go to so many verses? Because you're not arguing with me. You can argue with God all you want, but it's all written down and it's going to be there long after you disappear from the scene. You know, it was there before you were on the scene and it'll be there after you're, because this is forever settled in heaven. Okay? So, Psalms chapter 10, verse 4. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not at all. What does it say here? God is not in all his, all his thoughts. He doesn't, worry, he doesn't worry about what God has, has to say. Psalms 56, 5. Psalms 56, 5, a little bit to your right. He says, every day they wrestle with my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Do you ever do that? Do you ever wrestle with God's words? You know, it's like try to justify why you're the way you are, or the, why you're, what position you take. There's a lot of people that do that. They, they wrestle with this, and they go, well, if I wasn't in this circumstance, then I would be, it would be different. If, if my husband didn't do this, then I would respond differently. If my wife didn't, if, if my children, and then you can fill in the blank. Well, if my pastor, I mean, you can go, we can go everywhere with this. Every day they wrestle rest my words, and all their thoughts are against me for evil. 
Psalms 119, 113. Here's a psalm that says, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. See, our thoughts can hinder us or they can help us. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Our thoughts can hinder can either help us or hinder us. Job chapter 20, verse 2. Job 20, and verse number 2. He says, therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer. See, the way that we think we're going to answer, that's how we're going to answer. So if I have pure thoughts about Brian then my thoughts will answer that way. But if I have evil thoughts towards Brian, or maybe Brian offended me, guess what? That's going to change my vocabulary and how I respond to him, isn't it? And you, same thing, it, you can fill it, fill it in with your boss at work, you know, people that you live, live around, your neighbors, in church. Psalms 33. Psalms 33 and verse 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, his thoughts, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Listen, this goes to all generations. I mean, my, my mom read this to me. You know, we re read it to our children, and my children read it to their children. And hopefully their children will read it to their children if the Lord tarry. I mean, this goes to all generations. Amen. Psalms 94, verse 19. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. In the multitude of my thoughts. Listen, we're always thinking something. We're always thinking about something. What is it a delight? <coughs> Listen, I had I had um I have a sister, and I'll be honest, my thoughts weren't always weren't always good <laughs> towards my sister. But don't don't you dare raise a hand up to my sister. Because I got more fights because of my sister than I got than any other time. But my thoughts aren't always what they should be towards my sister. But he says here, in the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. You know, my, my, no, I don't want to go over my, with my sister. But, but um, you know, we, uh, we may have differences, but we love each other still. You know, we might have differences in the, in the family of God, but we love each other still, right? So, Psalms, Proverbs 12.5 says, The thoughts of the righteous are what? Right. But the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Listen, just think about what you're thinking. And I mean, even, even the world knows. The, the world will say, well, that ain't Christian-like. How do they know that? If they know, we should know, shouldn't we? I mean, we should be able to say, that's not right. Very simply, at work, you have a, a thought about your coworker. We should be able to say, that's not right. I need to, I need to do something with that. I need to get rid of that. Amen. First verse you learn in the RU, Isaiah 55, 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. You have abundantly pardoned him. Have mercy. It says, the unrighteous man has thoughts. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 7. 27, sorry. 
No, we can, we can play around with, with our thoughts and we can entertain our thoughts and we can keep them there. We can uh, entertain our, our, the friends that do not love God. But verse, 20, verse 27 is a, is a principle. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be, per- be burned? You're not going to get away with it for very long. You're not going to get away with the attitudes or the critical thinking or, or those things for very long before it comes back on you. Those who do not love the Lord will not help you serve the Lord. Let the Lord and his word discern your thoughts, according to Hebrews 4.12. Let the Holy Spirit guide you to the right friends. Let God's word and his leaders instruct you. I was looking at a verse, I'm not going to look it up right now, but uh, the Bible says that, that ye shall die without instruction. When we, don't, when we won't receive instruction, we, we die spiritually. Okay? Not, not that we're losing our salvation, but, but our spiritual life starts to diminish. And the carnal life starts to increase. Yeah, that's right. It's really that simple. One's increasing and one's decreasing at all times. It all depends on what you're, lo- what you're leaning towards or who you're hanging out with, or what thoughts you're entertaining. I mean, all this takes, takes into account. So I say, let God's word and his leaders instruct you, so they will influence you to the right thing. And so you'll make good decisions. Let God and his leaders help you know what and who you should separate yourself from, to make distance from. So you and I will have godly outcomes in the future. Determine tonight to be separated unto God. Seek counsel from godly leaders. And then, as, as, as they told Ezra, as thou hast said, so must we do. Listen, if the word of God says it, we should be doing it. We should be walking according to these ways. Let's bow for a word of prayer. If I ever had bowed and every eye closed. I just have a couple questions for you. We're going to open up the altar tonight. Listen, you might, you might need to make some distance between you and some of your friends. You might need to make some distance between your thought life and change the way, the way that you think. Well, I can't change the way I think. Yes, you can. God will give you the grace to do that. And the question here tonight is, do you separate yourself from God or do you separate yourself to God? You decide that. See, if I'm separating myself to God, from God, then my carnal life's going to increase. But if I'm separating myself to God, my carnal life's going to decrease. Secondly, do you need to Put some distance from ungodly friends, ungodly co-workers. Maybe it's, maybe it's ungodly employment. We're going to open up the altar. You can come and pray. My daughter Amber's going to play the piano. Just do one or two stanzas of whatever she picks. But listen, this is a time to do business with the Lord. The fourth step of a good man is one that is separated, has a separated walk. And there's distinctness in what they're walking towards. And what you're walking towards is going to decide what you're walking away from. What What are you walking to tonight? Some tonight are, are walking into, into places of darkness. It says in 2 Corinthians, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Now I receive you.
Brother Nozinski to close us in prayer tonight. Father, we thank you for um, you declared that a prudent man shall foresee his evil and hideth himself. Lord, I pray that you help us by your grace and mercy be hid in the rock of our salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us stand firm on the things that thou hast declared in thy word. Help us to embrace them and appropriate them into our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we need grace. We need mercy. Uh, Father, we need our eyes and the scales to fall thereof. We need understanding, and it's you alone who gives it. Father, the words of life are wonderful, but if you don't help us see the deep need that, to apply them to our lives, then we're in trouble. Father, help us not to have an intellectual understanding of the scriptures, but a personal relation to you and your Christ. We thank you for this program. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us in this life to those who have trusted Christ as their Savior to live a life that, is, that can be pleasing to you. Father, help us embrace the troubles, the trials, the tribulations. Help us not be discouraged and cast down, but to always looking unto you, knowing that thou art with us all the time. Thank you for that great promise. Thank you for counting us worthy enough to be transformed into something glorious like the image of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, keep us safe, keep us protected. Allow us to embrace the curriculum, to do the challenges, to show up to church, to pray, to fellowship, to be strengthened by you and you alone. Keep us safe as we go home from this place. Please bless the food that will follow. Bless the fellowship and encourage us for thy glory. And we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>